John. John. I can't get Jurassic Park back online without Dennis Nedry. My name is Dewey Jones. I'm a Colorado off-roader, and what I do is I film trail guides that show off Colorado, but also give you a unique off-road action. Now, today we are doing Mosquito Pass, and Mosquito Pass is a trail that many people can do, but this one's especially going to be good because we have a Jurassic Park Jeep, and we're going to prove in this video that Dennis Nedry can't drive. So let's go. If you are new here, welcome. Basically, our guides aim to give you a complete picture of the trail from start to finish so that you feel that you were there with us or the necessary information that you need to tackle the trail yourself. Now, we use both Fun Treks and Trails Off Road as reference material, but here we will be just using Fun Treks books as they started from Leadville and headed towards Alma just as we did. So how exactly did we get here? Well, we started in Leadville by heading east on 7th Street. This becomes County Road 3, and the pavement will end after Matchless Mine, and that's what we're showing now. You're gonna go straight for 1.8 miles, you're gonna bear slight left at 2.7 miles, and then at 4.1 miles, you're gonna end where I did the intro to this video. Once we get past the diamond mine, we start to get into the rocky terrain, but before we do and get to those better views and even rougher terrain, let's talk about the trail. According to DangerousRoads.org, Mosquito Pass is the highway of frozen death. They say, and this is a direct quote, not for the sissies and shouldn't be attempted by novice drivers. We will see how accurate that truly is by the end of this guide. However, let's look at the trail data as noted in the Fun Treks book. They label Mosquito Pass as a moderate trail, which is the highest pass open to motorized travel in Colorado. We will reach an altitude of 13,185 feet as we pass old mining structures and beautiful scenery. The trail as described is 10.8 miles long and should take us 2-3 to three hours to complete. Since it's a high mountain pass, the best time to do the trail is late July to September. The trail can open earlier than late July, so it is best to check on current conditions before going. There's also a spot that can hold snow late into the summer, and I'll show you that soon. Anyway, by the end of the guide, we'll have a good idea of what vehicles can do this trail, and we'll see if Fun Treks was right, or if Dangerous Roads was right with their caution. this is a great time to meet our awesome drivers today. Now many of you know Zach as he was in a lot of trail guides so far and he's coming up in a lot more. He's usually in his KL Cherokee Trailhawk, you know that black one. We'll hear what's going on with that later but today he is in his 1996 Jeep Cherokee XJ which was last seen in the T33 plane crash trail guide. Hopefully he'll have better luck today. Now we also have Rob with his awesome Jurassic Park replica Jeep. It is so sweet and we even made a video walk around showing everything he's done to it. It's a very accurate replica, although he may be running slightly smaller tires than the 225-75 R15s that we believe were on the Jurassic Park Jeeps. Still, it's a stock YJ Jeep Wrangler Sahara. Finally, I'm bringing up the rear in my stock Jeep Wrangler JK Rubicon. I try not to use my lockers on all these trail guides and I usually run aired up and with my sway bar connected. I do this to try to handicap the Jeep and because I know not everyone has a Rubicon, but I want people to know that you can take your Jeep no matter what it is on these trails. Let's get back to talking about the trail. Now we are on the lower parts of the trail which are a bit wider and better for passing oncoming vehicles. We are also passing two lakes. The first lake, the bigger one, is called Mountain Lake. The second one is called Evans Gulch Number 2 Reservoir. Just a little bit of information that you may want to know. We are now about 1.6 miles from the start of the trail. 
Here the split in the road can take us to either Mosquito Pass or to Bird's Eye Gulch, a difficult trail. Now let's talk a little bit about Bird's Eye. We plan on covering this trail in 2021 and I am very excited for it. I'm thinking about bringing the camper on it and some of my buddies are thinking I'm absolutely crazy. Apparently the kids in Leadville are all scared of this trail. Those aren't my words, they're just uh, what I'm hearing from my buddies that live there. Anyway, that's the point of these videos to find out for ourselves and report back to you. Now, this is why my Jeep will stay mostly stock or I'll always have a mostly stock vehicle for these trail guides as I feel that's a good way to show you how difficult these trails actually are. This is the trickiest part of the western or Leadville side of Mosquito Pass, the switchbacks. They're not exactly the steepest or rockiest switchbacks in Colorado, but they're not exactly straightforward either. If you are a new off-roader or not used to Colorado's high altitude shelf roads, these may seem daunting. If the weather is bad, these may become dangerous. The key is to trust your vehicle, use four-wheel drive low, relax and carefully steal your steer your vehicle up to the top. I believe that most trail rated vehicles like Jeep Trailhawks, Toyota Off-Road Editions and other 4x4 trucks and vehicles will make short work of this section. However at the end we'll discuss what mods and vehicles are good for this trail. All right, now it's either this spot or a spot later, so let me know what you think after watching. I am just a sucker for some three-wheeling. Anyway, pictures don't always do justice for showing the steepness or the rockiness of the terrain. Now hopefully our videos are helpful as it shows you how the vehicles got through the section. Now none of us were locked and my sway bar was connected here which limited my Jeep's articulation. Still, compared to some of the other trails we do, this wasn't that difficult. Four low and careful tire placement would allow a variety of vehicles to get past this section. You do want to have some ground clearance, but we'll discuss this further at the end of the video. Now this is the last stretch of trail before we get to the top of the pass, where we will be at an altitude of 13,185 feet. I tried to record some video in the field, but well, eh, just have a listen. Yeah, I bet you couldn't hear anything I was saying there. But basically, I was saying that in 1879, this was a toll road for moving freight using horse-powered covered wagons. Also, I wanted to make note of a memorial up here for Father John Dyer, the preacher for the mining camps. He didn't make much money from preaching, so he started carrying mail over the pass. He would use 10-foot Norwegian snowshoes to do this, and he encountered all kinds of animals. He was quite famous back in the day for his ruggedness and the ability to get over the pass in the winter. Well, at the top, the weather started to get worse. We started to get hailed on, so we figured it was best to continue on our journey towards South Park. Now, while I show you the trail, let's talk about what's coming and why I'm excited. Basically, we still have a bunch of trail guides from 2020 to edit and release. I'm going to be working on those, and I am, they're good ones, so definitely hang in there. But let's talk about a little bit what's going on. We are a new channel, so we are learning to make these better. Um, that is a big goal for us in 2021. The next one won't actually be a trail guide, but hopefully it'll help me learn to edit better. It's 
where the entire crew got together for some below freezing camping. I think it's going to be really good, even though I'm a bit nervous because the thieves that broke into my Jeep, they got the GoPro footage from this video, so I'm a little nervous about putting it together, but it should make me a better editor, and it's something I think you guys will like because it was freezing. Speaking of that break-in, I gotta say thank you both for your words of support and your donations. I definitely want to move on from it, um, so I don't want to recap the sequence of events that led to the fundraiser, but I'll put it in the comments or something, but basically I just wanted to say you guys are awesome. I am just so thankful that you guys believe in these videos, like these videos, and felt that they are worthy of your support. I know there's way bigger problems in the world, but with my current situation, you guys really are a lifesaver. But no matter what, I will eventually rebuild what was stolen, and until I do, I'll figure out new ways to shoot videos with whatever I have now. So we're not stopping. We're going to keep going, and let's continue with the trail. As much as I love the trail cam for capturing the entire trail, my favorite part of trail guides are the outside footage. And this area was rocky enough to warrant some good outside footage, so I hope you enjoy. Now we didn't have time to explore this side trail, FS41, but we will definitely do that in the future. Instead we stuck to the trail as described by Funtrex in their guidebook. Next up is what I consider a steep tricky section and some really cool mining structures. According to Dangerous Roads, there are a lot of different versions of the origin of the Mosquito Pass name. Now the most popular origin says just after nearby Montgomery was founded, gold was found in these mountains. The name came from a town meeting where they were trying to find a name and they found a mosquito squashed in the pages of a book. It was the only name they could agree on. Now I reviewed old maps in Gaia, but I could not find the towns of Montgomery or Mosquito, so I'm assuming that this was an older town, um, as these maps only went back to 1900. Anyway, let's keep going on the trail. I'm going to show you a tricky part of the trail, and then we're going to go check out some mining structures. This section is a little bit washed out, so we're going to film it. I'll show you these guys coming down. As we make our way down to the London mine, let me set up this next clip. When I first started making these, I wanted a fun way to show a trail's roughness. I happen to like beer, so the trail beer rating was created. However, please know I do not drink enough of this beer to receive any effects of the alcohol. So yeah, we have started to get requests to do review videos in exchange for a product. These may be great products, but when we recommend a off-road product here, I want it to be something that we actually use and have been using without any requirements to feature it in a video. However, breweries. We do love beer, and I'm confident to say we will feature and review all the free beer you can send us. You know, your move, breweries. Kinda rocky. All right, that's enough. Let's get back to the guide. All right, guys, we are at the North London Mine. We are checking it out right now. Um, I will probably put audio on top of it because I did not do my research, but here's some really cool video of the North London Mine. The London Mine was first opened in 1874. It was named for the mountain it was built into and it produced gold, silver, and lead. This is also the site of the first rope cableway in Colorado as the high altitude and rough environment made transporting the ore by other means pretty difficult. 
This ore was transported down to the North London Mill, which we'll see on the way to Alma. Anyway, let's get an update on Zach's KL and then we'll finish the trail and review it. Zach Huck here, and this is my new old 96 Cherokee. In the three weeks I've bought it, I've probably put about 80 hours into her. We've gone through and cleaned out the engine, cleaned out the coolant, made sure that all the misfires stopped, every check engine light's done for, replaced the transmission on her, replaced the hubs, we've gone through and replaced bushings, greased everything up, and now, I think she's about good on the trails. And if you've seen the last video, you know we had a little trouble once we got up there on uh... Hey Zach, why aren't you in your KL today? Well, I ordered some uh, axles from MFC Off-Road about four weeks ago, at which time they told me it would take two weeks to get my order. Well, as per an email I got about four days ago, it's gonna take about seven weeks now. So... All right, we're not about calling out shops here. That's between Zach and MFC. I just wanted you guys to know why we have not had that black KL in a lot of these videos from 2020. You know, it is what it is. Let's move on. Let's finish the trail. There's some great views on this section of the trail, and it's also a good time to talk about the trail. So this is trail review time. Funtrex rates it as a moderate trail, and it's in the middle for overall difficulty in their Central Colorado book. We agree with Funtrex, although they have Argentine Pass as 10 trails harder than Mosquito. But in our opinion, Mosquito Pass is slightly tougher than Argentine. We'll have a video on Argentine Pass soon so you can check it out and compare for yourself. Anyway, let's break down the trail. Rating trails is difficult because it's subjective and trails are constantly changing. So we hope our video gives you the info so you can decide for yourself. But here are our thoughts on the trail based on our trail day on August 30th, 2020. So we would say the trail is definitely a moderate trail with some washed out rocky areas that require some driver skill. A vehicle with a four wheel drive low range should have no problem taking on the trail. This includes all stock Trailhawks, Wranglers, and off-road models from other manufacturers. Still, only you know the abilities of your vehicle and your own skills, so consider that when deciding if a trail is for you. Now let's talk about where the trail really shines, and that is the scenery. Just like many Colorado trails, this one has spectacular views that I'll eventually get better at showing you. Now I am also a sucker for historic structures and this one has plenty of them. Hopefully this video gave you an idea of the scenery that you'll encounter when you do Mosquito Pass. This trail is incredibly scenic and I have to admit I have been extremely giddy on seeing this Jurassic Park Jeep out here. Oh my god those things are awesome. And. Uh, all right, let's talk about fun. Now this trail has a high fun factor despite not having any obstacles that really pushed our vehicles. Now it might have been how quickly the weather rolls through, the great crew that was here today, the high shelf roads, or just watching that YJ go that resulted in this high fun factor. Well, let's be honest, most off-road trails in Colorado are really fun because seeing these views will never get old. It is time to summarize the trail. So I do believe that most stock off-road vehicles can do this trail, but I recommend skids, rock rails, and good tires for vehicles that you plan on using off-road. Still, you could probably get away with not having skids or rock rails here, but that's your decision. Overall, I think it's a great trail for views, history, and adventure, and I hope you have as much fun as we did when you hit the trail. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I think we definitely proved Dennis Nedry could not drive because the YJ, especially the Jurassic Park YJ, is extremely capable. There's no way that it should have gotten, you know, done on that movie. So.